Hey, my name is Tom Gamble, I'm product manager at NGINX for NGINX Instance Manager. And we also have here, Jason Ashton. Hey guys, Jason Ashton, uh, modern application specialist here at NGINX. Wanting to talk a little bit about uh, NGINX Instance Manager and uh, some of the new features and capabilities. Excited to, uh, to hear more, Tom. Absolutely. So I was thinking we'd start off by talking about expired certificates. Now, have you ever encountered that? Uh, well, yeah, we, uh, it's certainly a big problem. Uh, you know, we have customers all the time that, uh, although they're maybe not bringing it up uh, as a, hey, can you guys solve this? Because uh, obviously what we're getting ready to talk about is like something exciting and, and, and new to NGINX. But we do recognize, obviously, with what we do every day uh, and dealing with our customers and the things you hear in the news uh, about some of these major outages by a simple oversight uh, in, in many cases. And so we, we definitely hear about it. And when we do, they're usually pretty big problems. And if you haven't heard or you don't know, NGINX uh, is often used for reverse proxy and, and uh, as a web server. And it's an extremely popular web server. Um, you might know this already, but with web servers, we, we generally will put our certificates on them, on the reverse proxy. And this is a point where we do need some visibility into the expired certs. So uh, what I'd like to do is just share quickly how we accomplish this with Instance Manager to help. This is our release of Instance Manager, but I'm gonna to go to uh, the side menu here that says certificates. And some of this is filled in, this, this populates with the, the subnet you're on. Um, but I am gonna go through and scan it. I'm just gonna see, well, maybe there's some other ports. I'm gonna hit start new scan. And this is gonna pull back uh, anything that's listening on the IP address uh, hmm. that has certificates. And it's gonna tell me also uh, how many days it expires, and the, the remaining days. Oh, that's cool. Oh, we see, oh look, we did get one on 444. Um, now in this case, it looks like it's pulling the instance manager itself, um, but we do have one on uh, .8 and .10. Um, and we'll focus on .8 here, uh, even though we have, well, many days remaining, that's pretty that's ridiculous. Um, let's, let's, let's assume that we had, it says two. It's two days remaining. Um, mm. This is a good example of a self-signed cert, which you might miss uh, in an environment. While these other ones are pretty standard and maybe I follow my company's processes and procedures, uh, if I had somebody spin up uh, a project really quick and we, we really never went back, it's very likely that they just generated a self-signed certificate. It's got a shorter remaining time uh, or it's too long and we accidentally hit that because you know things have changed uh, over that time. And this will help at least find those expired certs out there uh, that would be listening on uh, that IP address. Now, there might be more certs on the server, but this does give you that information right off the bat. And it, it was, this is one of the newer features of Instance Manager. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, even what we're looking at here, although it's you know uh, a lot of, of days, it does illustrate that there's a problem, right? Or, or something you wanna look into. Um, mm -hmm. So regardless, um, you know, without something like Instance Manager uh, Cert Scan, you're maybe operating, uh, managing these things in a spreadsheet. Is that safe to say? Or, you know, how are uh, companies or uh, people that are responsible for the certificates, how, how are they actually keeping track of these things today? So I've found there is a variety from uh, maybe it's a calendar invite to a more formal system to, hey, I'm, I'm just going to remember it. Uh, to no system at all. Uh, it really varies. And, you know, what happens is even the best intentions and the proper systems can often be deprecated because the, the balance of time is, it seems easier to have a long time period. It's more secure to do it shorter, but it's also harder because there's a lot of process involved. So that balance between the two can, can often uh, be lost. A lot happens over, let's say it's two years or four years. Um, systems change. I mean, what if you think back upon the applications you were using four years ago, uh, did you really know all the new ones you'd be using today? Probably not. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where we can get in a lot of trouble. And one issue, uh, one expiration on a backend system 
can cascade and have a really big effect on the overall systems. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's important that, you know, anyone who's maybe watching this understands that if you don't really know the answer to how your organization is managing these certificates, um, it's, it's a problem. Uh, and, and it's not something that's going away or slowing down. You know, these, these things are absolutely 100% a part of your, uh, your, you know, your web applications and security and everything else, right? So this is very critical stuff. Now we, we can find certs here. You can actually use public uh, uh, subnets here. Uh, this can be run through an API call. It can be scheduled as a cron job or another system could call it whenever it wants to. So uh, it's meant to be run periodically. It's also optional. Uh, this doesn't have to be used to, to experience instance manager, but for our dot eight here, this is actually one of our managed instances. Um, so I'm gonna go to the inventory screen and we're gonna find it is the plus CentOS one, and I'm going to go to edit. Now I know because I know where this one is. It's right here. Uh, our certificate is right here. So the feature we've added is, okay, if I know it has expired, what do I do next? How do I replace it? We've added a functionality where we push uh, contents out one way and I'm able to go in here and say, all right, I want to, update that certificate. I'm going to put in the contents. I'm going to hit upload. Now I'm not going to do it because I, you know, I can wait around for 2000 days uh, with this guy, but uh, I would hit upload and it would upload and put that file there. And I can do the same with the key. The, you might ask, wait a second. I'm not sure I want anything publishing there. And in fact, we don't publish there unless you add that directory into an allow list on the agent. So by default, you can only publish inside the Etsy Nginx directory, uh, but you can add them. And now you have the ability to not only detect and find expired certs, but also have API calls or use the UI to go out and replace them when you need to. Um, and furthermore, since you control the config here, I mean, you could add a new one called example one, you could upload it, call it, reload. And, and it gives you the, at least the ability to chain these together into finding replacing and updating uh, expired certificates. Yeah, from one place. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And so it, is it something that obviously if you're using Nginx in any capacity, open source or any of our enterprise uh, solutions, um, Nginx Instance Manager is something that is something, uh, you know, most, most of our customers are able to take advantage of and uh, utilize and and we've got other videos that uh, walk through uh, some of the benefits there. But what you're introducing here is a new capability, a new feature. Mm -hmm. um, is it something that can be standalone? So if I'm a customer and I have a really big problem with managing my certificates, um, can I purchase uh, Instance Manager and utilize uh, the, the the certificate manager? capability within this uh, independently? Yes, so the there is no limit uh, as long as you purchase it, uh, Instance Manager for that, uh, just as with the scan. Um, with, with the certificate scanning too, it, it scans any port that's listening. So this isn't limited to Nginx instances. In fact, it's really generic information that comes back. Um, we'll be adding more granular information on the API and the display uh, as needed, but primarily right now, the most important part is where it is, what it is, and when does it expire? Mm -hmm. So you can filter the API call by number of days to expiration. You can say, I just want to know anything expiring in the next 60 days. Uh, you could put in the date uh, for the same effect and really get back that information. Uh, so it, it gives you a lot of flexibility and, and you know power and the ability to make that call. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right. So I hope you enjoyed our video. Um, and please reach out. We, you can get a trial of Nginx Instance Manager uh, off of the nginx.com website. And uh, again, my name is Tom Gamble. Tom, and I wanted to say thanks for, uh, you know, to everybody and thank you for, for all your work on this and, and putting this together. Uh, I, I would also suggest that uh, you can follow any of the steps that Tom uh, gave here, but 
If you uh, are familiar with your Nginx or F5 modern application specialists, you can certainly reach out to them and they can help you facilitate either a trial or getting a little more information. So feel free to do that. We are here to help and uh, we appreciate your, your, uh, your business. Thank you.